advice on how to, to see the oneness? Okay, the question is, is there any advice on how to see the oneness? You might say that, that the perceptual problem of this world is based on duality, and duality and oneness don't go together. Uh, the most basic dualistic split is not between the things of the world, it's between a perceiver and a perceived world. It seems like in the human condition that as a human being you perceive a world that's outside of you, so you have five senses and that there's a world that surrounds you. In order to see the oneness, what happens is that that split has to get corrected. So, you know how people tell you that there's beautiful teachings now, uh, some of you might have heard of the Four Agreements. Uh, one of the Four Agreements is just don't take things personally. Well, it can seem easier said than done, but the whole ego, which is what the error is, is taking everything personally. So, in order to see the oneness, you simply have to learn how to get so aligned with the spirit and so detached from the world that you simply don't take anything personally. To give you a, a concrete example, a, a number of years ago, some friends of mine who were course students, they decided to, they decided to take a vacation and fly off to somewhere and leave their kids with me. Um, and so I went to the house and uh, Oh, did we have fun. Uh, uh, Mom and Dad were gone. And so they said, uh, we went to McDonald's like uh, seven nights. Every night we went to McDonald's. I'd say, say, where do you want to eat? McDonald's, Mickey D's. Next night, where do you want to eat? McDonald's. <laughs> so we went. In the living room, we, they had all the furniture arranged very neat and everything. And they said, you know, Mom and Dad never let us touch the furniture. We want to, we want to make, play house. We want to make courts and everything. So we had, we got the sheets out. We turned the living room, you know, into like a, a jungle gym and this and that. And as, as you will find it with children, they always try to test your boundaries, you know, to see how far you, they can go. They couldn't find any boundaries with me. Uh, they can, ooh, this is fun. This guy is fun. In fact, they got, they got so happy being around me that week that at one point they were like giddy with laughter, uh, just in a state of pure glee and joy of childhood, squealing with delight. Uh, and at one point, in this squealing state of delight, uh, they looked at each other and one of them, I think it was a uh, uh, little girl, Mandy, she, she, uh, she spit. And, and I'm in this state of, of perfect detachment, so I can see the the spitball coming through the air, and it lands in my beard. But I, when you're in the observer state, you don't even take spitting personally. <laughs> um, but I think he was a little upset when they said that. But I was in such a state of detachment that, that as soon as it landed and I didn't scream or holler or make a statement, they just went through and turned into a little spit test. <laughs> Because, and, and what I, I share that story is because when we really relax and we get into our innocence, and it's called like innocence, we, it's, it's like contagious, you know. Uh, people like to be around you when you're not judging them. You ever notice that? When you're, when you're just loving and innocent and accepted, that people come around you and they just like to hang around. And that's an answer to your question that, that the only way to really see the oneness is just to go so deep in your mind and do such a, a transformation and let your trust level come up that what you find is you reach a state of mind where you don't take anything personally. And that's really what the oneness is about. Uh, in the Bible it even says, God is no respecter of persons. <laughs> so the four agreements got an early start <laughs> way back in the Bible. And in answer to your question, that's really what this is about letting your trust level, your faith climb so high that you don't become defensive and you don't take things personally, regardless of what's happening. Uh, and people who know me, uh, we even had a, a windstorm uh, about a month or two ago, and um, I, I'm real simple. I don't even have uh, like collision car insurance or comprehensive anything. 
a big branch that came down from my neighbor's tree and, and smashed onto the house and then onto this car, put this big dent on the hood of the car. So they sent me out to investigate. And I came back in to the house and I said, our Lancer has been lanced. And uh, what else are you going to do? I mean, you're going to shake your fist at the tree, you know. All things work together for good. It's a state of mind where you just don't take anything personally and you don't get caught up into appearances and whatever. And that allows you to extend a lot of love and light and joy. You're not gullible because you're, you're invulnerable. You can't be gullible and invulnerable. Uh, when you're really in the state of mind training, when you really have let go of all these concepts and everything, you feel a connection and oneness with everything, and you really trust that all things work together for good. You are Present. Well, since we're at the Bunch Center, I, uh, we're talking about oneness, and I know that you know the power of our mind, and the difference is that life now is all levels of duality, and if we're able to change that belief system, even the one you should talk about, or have it, uh, that's where the transformation comes. You talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, this is... He just said some things. He said, judge not, lest you be judged. And it was, he was just talking about the basic thing, law of karma, as you sow, so shall you reap. You know, it's been said in many different cultures, in many different traditions. Um, I would call it forgiveness. Uh, when you really, really learn to forgive, you are completely invulnerable. And... Forgiveness, what you're talking about, uh, Lenny, is that, that this transformation of consciousness is when you really start to see that forgiveness is always a gift to yourself. Because you're really not forgiving anything or anyone. All you're doing is you're releasing the misperceptions and the obstacles from your own mind. And that's wonderful. So it's not like when you let go of a grievance that uh, you're really doing it for somebody else. It's actually, you're being very loving to yourself by letting go of that grievance. Uh, peace and grievances don't go together. And so the more you get into this joy of letting go of the grievances and the judgment, you really figure out that it, everything works out great. The grievances didn't, didn't get, help you with a bit, you know, it was always, there were negative thoughts. There were these judgmental thoughts that you were lugging around. So I was sharing a little bit yesterday at the gathering that in this world people are very concerned about things like diets and exercise and um, all kinds of things that I would call form things. And what Jesus taught 2,000 years ago, it's not what you put in your mouth that defiles, it's what proceeds forth from the heart. Um, Many years ago, um, uh, my biological parents were looking at me, and uh, my biological mother said, "Dave, we know you you live right, you you eat right, you get exercise. We know you you really live a very healthy lifestyle." But she said that accidents do happen, and my biological father just shook his head and said, "No, he doesn't even believe in accidents." And I don't. Uh, I don't think it's a random universe. Who would want to live in a random universe? And so I got into that state where I started to realize that it was my thinking, my judgmental thinking, that was unhealthy. And that when I got into this divine providence, I was able to spun, to give up health insurance, didn't have to worry about eating the right foods anymore. Uh, it's a blast. I, mean, I was been a tennis instructor, cardiovascular fitness. I didn't even have to exercise. Uh, I believe years ago that the body would atrophy if you didn't exercise it. That's a belief too. Uh, when nothing's going wrong with me, I don't, I don't even exercise. I mean, nothing. Uh, you know, it's like, you, you see, my dad had all this guilt about I'm not eating the right food, I'm not exercising enough, I'm too fat, I'm too skinny. And that's what the ego has to do, it tries to keep you guilty caught up into all these meaningless little things that really don't matter in the, in the overall context of things. And and God wants you to be happy. That's it. God doesn't, you know, have some kind of a plan where you have to, you know, do attain some great thing. He just wants you to be happy in the present moment. That's all God wants. 
And once I realized that, that that's what God will for me, then I said, that's good news. I can, I'm going for that one. <laughs> I like this happiness idea. So, in answer to what your question was, honey, um, it, it is an inner job. And I put my heart and soul and everything into this purification in my mind. Um, because I knew that that was what was necessary. And I was also able to pull my energy away from the wild goose chase of running around in the world, uh, trying to keep up with the Joneses and, you know, I let go of self-improvement. Uh, God told me I was perfect just the way I was right now. So I let go of even the concept of, of self-improvement or becoming uh, a spiritual person or becoming enlightened or becoming whatever. It's all still future-oriented and really right now is the kingdom of heaven is right now. The kingdom of heaven is within. You don't need to look to a person, a place, a thing. Because as they say in the matrix, you are the one. <laughs>
except when you see somebody and you write, jump on them and scream at them, <laughs> you, you've got a clue that you've got something still in your consciousness that, that is uh, less than truthful. <laughs> and so, uh, in order to come to the oneness, you really start to realize that, that oneness is, a, is an interaction or an alignment with your source. And when you're aligned with your source, you are automatically aligned with everyone. With everyone and everything. So, stop bringing up relationships because um, a lot of the traditional spiritual paths, you know, go off to the Himalayas and get away from people. <laughs> Just meditate. Uh, what I, my path was, I had people around me a lot. And I did have my hermitage experiences, but I learned to use relationships to get in touch with what my own inner blocks were. Never to blame them, never to scapegoat, never to point the finger and say that they're the problem. When the Holy Spirit inside me kept saying, everywhere I went, all I heard was this one thing, uh, it's your own lesson, it's your own lesson, it's your own lesson. I heard that over and over and over, so even though when I was tempted to say, but, <laughs> but what about, the Spirit would always gently say, it's your own lesson, don't try to change it out there. So I think um, it's great to be able to use relationships to come to this clearing of the mind. And um, we talk a lot about that. In fact, a lot of my tapes and CDs and writings are about relationships and, and coming to holy relationships, learning to let go of uh, special relationships and grievances and judgments and learning to appreciate and love everyone. In fact, I, I don't know if we have a, how our sound system is, but is this the room that we have in there? Um, I've got a song called Now That We All Are One. <laughs> and since it's the one that's better, um, I'd like to try to play that so we all can hear it. And uh, just close your eyes and relax. And the song has a lot of great lines in it, but uh, one of the lines in the song is, let us toss away the thoughts of many years. You know, it can seem like a very heavy thought to think how many years is it going to take, it, take us before we experience this oneness. And what this song is saying is, we're one right now, and it's okay to give your mind toss away the thoughts of many years. Just go in and feel your oneness, feel your love and your joy and your happiness right now. It's in the uh, it's in the boombox. It's in the it's just the